Weber Dental Manufacturing Company of Canton, Ohio, takes pleasure in presenting Fountain of Happiness. This is the story of a man who dared to venture and dared to make his dreams come true. In so doing, he brought comfort and happiness to dental patients and doctors throughout the entire world. All through the ages, men have sought to cleanse themselves at the fountains of moving water, for in water there is cleansing. And in movement, there is a purging away of the impure. As an ancient writer declared, cleanliness is next to godliness. Henry Ernst Weber, a Canton, Ohio pharmacist, had an instinctive appreciation for cleanliness and neatness. His was an exact art, the compounding of minute quantities of potent drugs. It was natural then that he reacted violently to what he experienced one day in 1896 when he visited his dentist. Here is the first Weber Fountain Cuspidor, designed and made by Mr. Weber to supplant the crude cuspidor he saw in his dentist's office. It replaced the cuspidor then commonly in use, which consisted of a bowl within a bowl. Water filled the inner bowl and overflowed gently into the larger bowl. Henry Weber's early experience as an apprentice machinist before entering the Cleveland College of Pharmacy once again became useful to him and to all mankind. In his home workshop, he toiled away at the task of producing a miniature fountain within a brass bowl. This was a revolutionary device for a struggling profession whose offices were mainly on upstairs floors and a profession which was forbidden to use running water for fear the water would be left running and ruin merchandise on the floors below. First made of brass, the Weber Fountain Cuspidor gradually evolved into the handsome, opaque, self-cleansing glass bowl found in today's dental offices. Around the inside perimeter of the bowl flowed a small, continuous stream of pure water which formed a tiny whirlpool in the bottom of the bowl and instantly swirled refuse down the drain. The new cuspidor quickly attained popularity and Mr. Weber turned his attention to other dental office equipment. Only two years after his epic marking visit to his dentist's home office as a patient, Mr. Weber founded the Weber Dental Manufacturing Company in 1898. He never forgot the discomfort he experienced sitting in the crude dental chair with his head back and the chair arms jabbing his armpits. His basic ideas for comfort in a dental chair were later brought to fulfillment in the Weber chair that relaxes just like the body does and assumes a completely horizontal position if so desired. The cloth placed on the patient's forehead remains in place demonstrating the completeness of the prone position. Not only the dental patients were grateful for the new chair, but doctors too found a strength conserving a lie in the powerful compensating spring which helped lift patients from a reclining position. Mr. Weber never forgot the tablecloth pulled back to make way for the disarray of crude dental tools. He never forgot the little black bag, the little portable chamber of horrors. His passion for orderliness persisted and other dental aids were invented in quick succession. Why not assemble the doctor's tools in orderly fashion as I do in my home workshop? Mr. Weber's answer to his own question was the unit assembly containing everything the doctor needs right at his fingertips. Throughout the succeeding years, Weber units evolved gradually in design and appearance to sleek, gleaming equipment that is the pride of every dentist, but still the fundamentals laid down by Henry Weber in 1898 remain the same. Today, we take the Weber unit for granted. That's as it should be, for dependability and unfailing serviceability are the watchwords of the Weber company. Weber progress is evident in these old photos. This chair was designed and put into production in 1908. 
1916, Weber developed this Model B unit. This X-ray unit dates back to 1919. Here is the X-ray developed in 1925. And here is the modern Imperial unit, Model J. For the practitioner who operates from a sitting position at the rear of the chair, this unit with separate cuspidor is ideal. Originated by Weber, this split unit is one of the most popular units on the market today. The development of Weber X-ray units is a story in itself. However, here is shown a tube from an early Weber X-ray unit and a modern one. The exclusive oil-cooled feature has won for Weber X-ray units wide acclaim in the dental field. We could spend hours introducing you to the members of the Weber family who produced exclusive features and firsts for the industry, but to Henry Weber must go the credit for the basic ideas which have made the Weber name famous. Mr. Weber proved to be not only an able inventor, but a competent business manager and a star salesman. In 1907, he incorporated the Weber Dental Manufacturing Company for $125,000. When he passed away in 1930, his organization was one of the four largest dental equipment manufacturing companies in the United States. Russell McGuire, eminent financier, is now the owner of the Weber Company. Now let's take a quick trip through the Weber plant. Trucks from all over the U.S. thread their way through the lines of employees' cars at the rear of the Weber plant to unload carefully selected raw materials for Weber equipment. Here, for instance, are Weber chair castings carefully made to the precision specifications demanded by Weber engineers. Steel tubing, brass tubing, and bar stock are purchased to Weber specifications and stored in quantity in the Weber warehouse. Intricate machining operations turn out thousands of minute parts with watchmaker's precision. Here, a piece of tubing is being heated to relieve stresses prior to bending. This makes possible a completely symmetrical bend without crushing or cracking tubing. This is called annealing. To soften copper for bending, it is heated, quenched in water, and comes out soft and ready for bending. Steel quenched in water would be hard and brittle, so it is slowly air-cooled. Here is an electronic process known as induction brazing. It's a method of heating parts to such a temperature that silver solder will melt and join parts together as one. After the various parts have been machined, surfaces are ground and polished prior to painting. Parts to be chrome plated are also ground and polished, but to a higher degree. All steel parts are first copper plated, then nickel plated, and finally chrome plated. This particular scene shows the copper plating tank. A chemical laboratory technician is on duty at all times to see that the chemical standards are maintained in the electroplating tanks and paint rooms. The camera lens looking into this infrared paint baking oven is almost blinded by the white heat which bakes on the multiple coats of primer which precede the colorful lacquer finish. Up to this point, all parts look alike. But here the doctor's choice of Weber's famous eight colorite shades come into play. Repeatedly, the various parts are lacquered, sanded, and polished to give depth and luster to the finish that is characteristic of Weber products.
Perhaps the most intricate assembly job in the Weber plant is the X-ray head transformer, which contains the X-ray tube immersed in a special insulating oil, which protects operator and patient against electrical shock. The transformer has now been placed inside the beautifully streamlined shell, which is referred to as the X-ray head. It has undergone severe cycling tests, is fully assembled, and is being tested for X-ray radiation value. A Weber engine armature is being balanced on a Weber dynamic balancing machine. A stroboscope assists in locating the point at which the armature may be out of balance. Engines are tested for noise, speed, temperature in the soundproof room shown here. Completed units, ready for final inspection, boxing and shipping, look deceptively simple in construction and design, but beneath their sleek contours are thousands of precision-made parts, thousands of man-hours of labor. Water, gas, air, and electrical connections are made, and the unit is tested under actual working conditions. Further tests then subject the unit to extremes well beyond the limits of normal use. This Weber employee is installing the chair lift tube assembly, setting the rubber mountings for the electric motor and the hydraulic pump assembly. 9,500 pound weight test follows. All the components to the upper part of the chair come together at this point and the chair assembly is completed. Before the chair leaves this stage, final adjustments are made. Motor chairs are moved from this point into a soundproof room where they're connected to an automatic timing device which raises and lowers the chair repeatedly for one and one half hours. And this little monster, no, it's not a big black spider, but a noisy little fellow that carefully weaves the nylon life-saving thread around the rubber-covered electrical cords and rubber tubing. Even after the manufacturing process is completed and the product has gone into the shipping room, the inspection department reaches out to take one last look. And here she is with her eagle eye and her little light inspecting a Weber dental unit. A battery of Weber X-rays undergoes similar scrutiny before shipping. This chair has received the best of care in manufacture and handling and the Weber boxer is not to be outdone by his fellow employees. He wraps it in a soft quilted paper and felt blanket, pulls the prefabricated box sections around it, and nails them into place. And presto, it's on its way to the doctor's office. You have learned something of the origins of the Weber company, met key personnel, and visited the Weber plant. Now go with us on our magic carpet to various cities and see for yourself how the dreams of a Canton, Ohio druggist have brought comfort and happiness to people all over the world. Here's an exterior view of the famous Beth Israel Hospital of Boston, Massachusetts, which uses Weber equipment extensively. Arabic temple for crippled children at Houston, Texas, another fine modern Weber installation. Orthopedic Hospital of Los Angeles, showing a battery of Weber units. Interior view of the Houston Arabic temple for crippled children. And still another picture of a typical Weber installation. Yes, such an unlovely thing as a dentist's crude brass cuspidor has brought forth a fountain of happiness, happiness for patient and doctor. All because one man dared to dream and dared to venture. Not only hospitals, state institutions, the armed services and doctors of dentistry use Weber equipment, but many of the leading dental schools. Here is the view of the new Ohio State University Dental School building and several interior views having Weber installations. Over 160 Weber units, 
have recently been installed in Ohio State University. This emblem is the beginning of a fine professional career for many a doctor, but on this film, it signifies the end.